Have you ever felt overwhelmed by your emotions? Do you sometimes struggle to understand why you feel or think a certain way? If so, you're not alone, of course. Getting caught up in our thoughts and emotions is easy, and it makes it difficult to process our feelings effectively. In this episode, I want to teach you about mindfulness and how that can help with emotional processing. My name is Justin Sinceri. I'm a therapist, coach, and the creator of the Polyvagal Trauma Relief System. Welcome to Stuck Not Broken, where I teach you how to finally get relief from trauma using clear language and practical techniques. This podcast is, of course, not therapy, nor is it intended to be a replacement for therapy. So look, I know, I know you're probably tired of hearing about mindfulness. It is everywhere. Um, but, you know, hear me out. I, I think I can make it more practical and understandable and not so woo-woo. I want you to be able to have greater emotional well-being, more self-regulation. I want you to be able to have a strong vagal break and more resilience to life's challenges. And so being able to feel your feelings and to improve your emotional processing with mindfulness can be really helpful. So what is mindfulness? Briefly, it's an experience, I would call it, of non-judgmental awareness that focuses specifically on the present moment. It involves paying attention to all of, or maybe one of, it could be thoughts, emotions, impulses, or your bodily sensations. So it could be any of those, or all of them, without getting sucked into despair or crisis or being triggered. If you're curious and you're connected to the present moment, you're being mindful. That's, that's really it. Mindful awareness can be of the present moment through the external environment. So the things you have around you being connected to your surroundings. It could be through your internal experience, through interoception. So being able to look inward and feel what's going on inside. That's really it though. Mindfulness can be done while moving. It can be done while being still. There's really no one right way of being mindful. I think it's actually pretty straightforward conceptually. It's To me, it's, you know, are, are you connected to the present moment? in some capacity, whether internally or externally, through your senses, are you connected to the present moment or not? So what is emotional processing? Emotional processing is basically the ability to feel your difficult feelings and then allow them to reduce in intensity. And when that happens, that that calming is going to enable you to experience more of what the present moment uh, has to offer you. For the polyvagal nerd listeners, I would call this more of like, it's just, I would just call it self-regulation. It's the ability to allow uh, defensive state emotions or sensations or impulses or cognitions and then be able to experience them and allow them to soften. Mindfulness and emotional processing go together. There's a relationship between them and it's really like a, a mutual supportive, mutually supportive relationship. By practicing mindfulness, you can become more aware of your emotions. As you practice feeling or being in the present moment and being in connection with yourself, then as these emotions come up that might be a little more difficult, you're better able to recognize them and actually maybe even welcome them or be with them rather than avoiding them through some sort of coping skill or numbing out behavior that you might do or some sort of like reflexive behavior. So through being more mindful, you actually can be better at processing your emotions. So how does mindfulness lead to emotional processing? And to answer this, we have to get a, a, just a really quick understanding of how of what the polyvagal theory teaches us about safety state. So polyvagal theory from Dr. Stephen Portis teaches us that when you're connected to the present moment, that's a pretty good indication that your brainstem pathway is responsible for safety and social engagement are activated. So these ventral vagal pathways, these are responsible for your ability to connect with yourself, to connect with others, but also to connect with your external environment. Really the, the impulse I think of the safety state is connection. So when these pathways are active, they keep your heartbeat at a calmer pace. It's called the vagal break, but we're not, don't worry about that right now. So when these pathways are active, they keep your heartbeat at a calmer pace and that keeps your defensive biological pathways from activating. So your flight, fight, and shutdown pathways don't activate and take over. Or if they do, they don't dominate. So suppose your body is not in a defensive state. In that case, 
you will not experience anxiety, anger, panic, and a whole bunch of other quote unquote negative emotions that keep you from being mindful or or are obstacles to increased mindfulness. So in other words, when your body is prepared for safety, you won't exist in these negative emotions. And if this is true, then you're much more capable of emotional processing. Your more negative emotional experiences will calm down and then you'll have you'll open up a possibility for other experiences to surface, possibly safety state ones. Likewise, if your body is prepared for safety, it's much more likely to be able to process your negative emotions, like your defensive state emotions. For example, if uh, anger surfaces, then you'll be able to notice and allow and maybe even mindfully experience it. This process leads to a reduction in the intensity of the anger. If this intrigues you, I have a course called Unstucking Defensive States. It's part of my larger polyvagal trauma relief system. And that course, Unstucking Defensive States, teaches you in depth how to do this stuff. I've got a handful of strategies for practicing mindfulness for you that will help you to feel your feelings. Practicing mindfulness has to be both practical and accessible for you uh, to use. So here's five techniques to practice mindfulness. Number one is use cognitions to open up the potential for mindfulness. I covered these in the last three episodes, validation, normalization, and giving permission for your emotions to exist. Number two is body scanning to to identify where your emotion lives. Number three is mindful movements. Number four is mindful breathing. And number five is journaling and creative expression. I'm going to go into each of these in a little bit of detail here. With your thoughts in particular, there's three that I want you to give yourself to help open up the possibility for mindfulness and for being in your safety state and for emotional processing to happen. The first one's validation. It's just asking, is your emotion real? Is what you're going through real? That's that's validation. It's kind of like confirmation. It's not evaluating it, not rejecting it. It's not even really embracing it. It's just like objectively, is this what I'm feeling? The second thought you can give yourself is normalization. And this is just asking, does what I feel, does this emotion make sense? Does it make sense based on the context that it's, I'm feeling it in and, or does it make sense based on the context of my overall life? And the third thought, uh, brain to body message is giving permission. So if your emotions valid and normal, then you could give it permission to exist within your body in the present moment. It's already there anyway, so might as well give it permission. That's the idea there. So after that, after you do the uh, brain to body thoughts to open mindfulness potentially, then you could do body scanning to identify where your emotion lives. And this is um, a pretty simple technique. Uh, It's basically imagining, or at least the way I do it, is I like to pretend like there's some sort of futuristic laser body scanner that starts from the top of my head and goes all the way to the bottom of my toes. And I imagine this like red laser, just sort of like horizontally going um, all the way up and down my body or from the top to the bottom. And that helps me to just focus on one area at a time. And as I do that, I can ask myself if, I, if what I'm feeling lives there or notice anything else that might come up. The third strategy for practicing mindfulness and feeling your feelings is mindful movements. Now this could be something like very organized like yoga, tai chi maybe, these practices can really help build your awareness of what's happening in your body and as well as your emotions. But you can also do simpler things, like I don't expect you to go do yoga to be mindful in this moment. Maybe that's not something you can, it's not practical, right? So there might be something else you can do, uh, like fidgeting. You know, if, if you can fidget with something, an object, you can pay attention and focus on what it's like to fidget. Like if you have AirPods case around you, like I do, that's, I like to fidget with this, with the, my AirPods case, I just like to roll it around in my palm. I like the smoothness, the way the plastic feels. So it's fidgeting. It's a small movement, but it's possible to be mindful of what it's like to fidget. The fourth one is mindful breathing techniques. I think breath is a really good way to be mindful and to be connected to yourself um, but your breath is always there. It's always present. It's for the most part predictable. There's a rhythm to it. So, you know, find a quiet 
comfortable place to sit down or lie down if you can. Close your eyes if you want to, you don't have to. And then bring your attention as best you can to your breath. And just notice this, the, uh, the experience, the sensations of breathing in and breathing out without trying to control it. Just let your body breathe the way that it already knows how to. And then you get to be this curious observer or someone who's witnessing the, 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 the process of breathing. The only breathing technique I, I like to recommend is to extend your exhale. Doing so activates the parasympathetic system, which just helps activate that safety state a little bit longer as you breathe out. When you breathe in, the sympathetic system actually comes on just a little bit. And the final strategy for practicing mindfulness and feeling your feelings is mindful journaling and creative expression, writing or other means of creativity, like art, painting, drawing, whatever. Uh, these, this can be a great way to process, to allow and process your emotions and to develop mindfulness. But I would say is if you're going to do this, focus on what's happening right here and right now. Okay, not the past exactly. I, I don't encourage people to uh, to rumin- to think about or retell trauma narratives when it comes to journaling, unless like you really know you can handle it. That's something else. But in general, I do not recommend that, especially if you're you know new to this stuff. Journaling to me is best for what's happening right now in this moment. What am I thinking? What am I feeling? Maybe. And you can be extremely literal with what's happening right here, right now. I have uh, five journaling tips for you. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to give you three. I'll put a link in the description to the blog that has the other two. But three of my favorite journaling tips are to alternate your speed of writing based on what you feel inside. So if you feel if you feel anxious, it's okay to, to feel anxious in the present moment, of course. And if you feel that and you feel your body starting to rev up, your heartbeat picking up and you feel maybe some a little jittery inside, then write faster. Let it come out. Use your hand or your arm as an extension or as a as a venue or as an uh, avenue, a path for that energy to come out. And the your pen or pencil is just is just a part as an extension of you. Second tip is to focus on the process, not the outcome. Don't worry about people reading it. That's not what it's about. Don't worry about it looking pretty. I mean, you can if you want, but don't worry about it being a final product. It's it's a it's a process. It's it's a journey of in the moment of just feeling what you're feeling without having an outcome in mind of what it's supposed to be or what it should be once you're done. And the last one is to not use a journal. You don't have to write in a journal. You can type, you can write, you can draw, you can sketch, you can doodle, you can use a chalkboard if you like. It doesn't matter. Don't restrict, basically don't restrict yourself to how this should be. Pick what feels best for you and is most accessible and then use that. Fellow Stucknot, I do hope this episode has been a helpful resource for you in your process of learning about and applying the polyvagal theory maybe or just how to be a bit more mindful or how to process your emotions a bit more effectively. I really hope this has been helpful for you. If you like this, do me a favor and share it with someone that you think might like it as well. I hear from people often that are evangelizing the podcast and sharing it with others. And I appreciate that so much. Thank you for that. Otherwise, bye. This podcast is not therapy, not intended to be therapy or be a replacement for therapy. Nothing in this creates or indicates a therapeutic relationship. Please consult with your therapist or seek for one in your area if you are experiencing mental health symptoms. Nothing in this podcast should be construed to be specific life advice. It is for educational and entertainment purposes only. More resources are available in the description of this episode and in the footer of justinlmft.com.